Hello, my name is Charlene Stevens, and I am the director of Arcade Project Curatorial. Our current exhibition, Gay Gorilla, includes an artist film library in which each artist will answer three questions to define the new genre of queer abstraction. Hi, I'm TJ Ditto Norris, and I am one of the artists in the exhibition Gay Gorilla. Um, when thinking about queer abstraction as it relates to my practice, I believe that after grad school, um, where I was in a painting and printmaking program at Yale uh, University, I focused a lot on performance. Somehow the language around painting in grad school uh, felt really um, dead and sort of um, something I, I wasn't able to embody. It wasn't like a, a, an embodied experience. And I think that that is one of the sort of seeds of my work is this idea of embodiment. And I particularly felt um, interested in the notion that I felt more like a performer when, main, when making paintings than I did actually than making performances. Um, so at a certain point, I started thinking deeply about what it meant to be in my body, in my embodied experience as someone who is a black politicized um, person um, who comes from a multi-raced background and who navigates the world radically, I believe, in a more fluid way, not just in the embodiment of gender identity, but even in making, in the way that I think things sort of cross-pollinate a lot um, and even in my performance works, there's many personas that sort of um, blur the lines between who is who, what is what, what is the shift between a work that is a performance versus an object versus a painting versus a sculpture. So for me, there was a place that I got with my work in being in the studio post-grad school um, and really seeing the frame of the painting um, as almost a type of embodiment, like a figure. And I was often projecting, um, attempting to work through fabrics uh, familiar fabrics, familiar smells, scents, curtains, bed sheets, um, in order to sh think about form and personhood and using the frame as a vessel to do that. The paintings Jerusha and Zarish are two works that come from the Contraposto series. Um, my original investigation of Contraposto, I think, was inspired by Michelangelo Pistoletto's Venus of the Rags work where we're thinking of Venus um, in the pose, sort of leaned more on one foot than the other, sort of one shoulder up, one down. 
um, and thinking a lot about Venus as a mythological figure of virtuosity, of, um, of production, of fertility, of perfection, and also Venus as the ideal subject uh, in art history as a model, right? And um, also, in I spent a lot of time in grad school remaking works from the canon to watch how they transcend or most often collapsed um, on itself and realizing that I could never be Venus. I will never be viewed as perfect because like I am not timeless. I have tattoos, I have things that mark me to a socioeconomic status, a gender presumably, um, a time, a region, a geography. Um, and I was thinking a lot about also Jerusha and Zeresh, who are both women um, that are named in the Bible. And I believe that their stories are complex. And I'm really interested in what I believe in some cases is a cleaning up of how these stories are told about um, women in the Bible. Um, what actually happened versus how they were written about. Um, and so in some cases, this series was made up of um, like me uh, shifting the function of a curtain um, and sort of using the structure to address, to dress and address this idea of personhood, domestic space, the frame, um, how we are framed. And for me, one of the biggest things I think that impact me about seeing these works are um, how clearly empty the centers of these frames are. There is a, a often a, a type of transparency or a sort of folding in or a sheer space that allows you to see inside or beyond the frame. Um, and again, it's so much for me, it's so much of, of a projection and maybe even a type of self-portrait, an attempt at the many selves, self-portraits. And all of the fabrics that occur in those works and the works that I make have deeply personal meaning and connection. Either they're fabrics that I have, um, they've been previously bed sheets on my beds or curtains on my walls, um, or gifted fabrics or hand-me-down clothing. Um, and it becomes sort of a bigger conversation about a type of community or embodiment of a of a multi consciousness awareness. The Contraposto series, which um, two of the works in the Gay Gorilla exhibition come from that series, Contraposto. And thinking about the pose, um, the model, the pose, Contraposto, art history, 
and wanting to take my body out of the work, but still think about embodiment and personhood in that way and sort of dressing and framing the frame. This sort of, I'm really interested in stretcher bars um, and addressing the stretcher, addressing the frame and that sort of middle empty space and what it's being filled with or not filled with or what it is revealing or not revealing or thinking about a lot of my early work from undergrad uh, my professor one of my professors and mentors Larry Pittman um, referred to a lot of the draping and the things that my paintings were doing as making modesty panels or thinking of like the midriff of the painting and it was a it's a really nice way to sort of for me think about my own experience with trauma and embodied trauma and sort of like a type of dysphoria. Um, and I've always been interested in how I sort of anthropomorphize the objects that I make and thinking of them as maybe children or lovers that I'm engaging with, talking to, um, attempting to please, and have them become. And that moment of becoming is really powerful to me. And uh, the process itself is really one of me working through allowing these materials to talk to me and tell me how they want to come into the world. And I feel that that's so powerful. Um, and it's the way that I kind of then reverse engineer thinking about how I see myself and how I want to come into the world and every object that um, gets made as I allow myself to be sort of the vessel for these things coming to life. It is a type of a queering experience that then I can observe and learn from in some way. Um, I learn a lot from these objects coming into the world by them honoring me to be the vessel for which they are able to become. And I feel like it's an opportunity for me to give myself permission to do the same in my own personal um, embodiment. And the last thing I'll say about it is I think um, this notion of queer abstraction I feel like I really have to lean into also giving thanks to Howardina Pendel and many other artists that have come before me that I think have shown me how my work can exist, this work can exist in the world. I get to take ownership of it in some way, I guess and not be indebted to a particular narrative or explicitly the figure. Um, it's a place for me to transcend um, my own ideas about what it is to be and exist as an object, as a sculpture, as a painting, as a performative gesture, as an installation. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to learn more about Arcade Project Curatorials program, you can find us on arcadeprojectzine.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and on Artsy.